Hi folks, my name is Glenn Phelps. This is my Cozy 4 that's under construction. It's pretty well along. Well, I came upon a reason for dropping the main gear, the landing gear bow, from the fuselage. At this point in time, that can become pretty difficult to do. I've got the wings on, I've got the controls in the back, although the firewall is not done. I had a lifting device I used to raise it from there to support it, but in order to support the fuselage so I could drop the landing gear bow, I couldn't use that without taking all that equipment off. I needed to complete it in a day's period of time just due to other scheduling. So I came up with a method of doing that. And that's my purpose of sharing this with you today, is how I managed to do that and explaining my thought pattern went along. Many of you might have said, oh, I would have known how to do that. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person on the planet, but I had to figure it out and I didn't have anybody to ask at the time. I may have something that may be of value to you here, and then again, on the other hand, it might be something you won't want to use, and some of you might say there's a better method, and I'm not saying there isn't a better method. I'm just saying it's something I used, and I wanted to share it with you. Now the reason I needed to drop the bow so was so that I could get at the 16 machine screws. There are four here, four on the opposite side, and then there's four in the back landing gear bulkhead. Those 16 screws had to be replaced, and so in order to get those, as we'll see in a minute, the bow had to come down so there'd be a clearance enough to get them out. We're now underneath the aircraft and you can see the other side of the hard point where the head of the machine screws come in right in here. Clearly there's not enough distance to be able to get those screws out without dropping the bow. Same in the reverse, rear side. So the bow needs to come down. This is drawing M9. I chose this drawing to show you the structure of that back landing gear area. This is the landing gear box up here we're talking about, but I'm going to support the aircraft on this section right here. This is certainly structural here, and this is structural here. Go back to drawings and look at the number of layers of fiberglass in here. This is a very rigid area. I'm not sure I'd support an aircraft that was fully constructed with an engine on it, but remember my engine is not on. I would estimate my weight of this aircraft at this point to be somewhere near 700 pounds and with the canopy and the canard off probably a center of gravity um, at about 106 inches. Now let's talk about how I raised the frame enough to get the wheels off the ground. Once I could get the wheels free of the ground, I could take the brake calipers loose and take the wheel off, giving me about three inches to lower the bow, which would be sufficient to replace those screws. I have the Williamson electric lift in my aircraft, which if overloaded, there's a slip clutch that can slide, allowing it to come back down. Knowing that that was a possibility with the load that might be on the front of this aircraft at the time, I turned that landing gear up and down manually. Now I looked at the aircraft here, I noticed at the back in this area right there, and I showed you a landing gear box on the, on the drawing, M9 I think it was drawing, that would be sufficient to hold the aircraft in this lightweight without an engine on. 
as you lower this nose all the way to the ground this goes upward or higher. I put my sawhorse which just happened to be the right height and a piece of three-quarter inch plywood to spread the load across that landing gear box and the motor or the firewall box to spread the load onto the top of the sawhorse. I then said I don't want this thing falling so I added a little bit of extra support here for vertical load and in order to keep the bottom of the legs from spreading I put that on. Then with the nose down I was able to put that in the position behind the aircraft then I cranked the nose up which almost lifted both wheels off the ground. I then took a second sawhorse and had a friend raise the nose and put that second sawhorse in here. Now this was almost level to the ground so I didn't get a lot of thrust load either side. I was then able to take the wheels and tires and the brakes off. Before doing that, to stabilize the airplane, I took two of these adjustable lifts and I put them on each side or each on each wing in this location here without a lot of force. I didn't want to support the aircraft from that, but I wanted to make it stable. I also went back to the firewall and took an engine lift and a chain and a bolt through each one of the lower motor mounts just to hold the frame in case it should slip. That was really a second safety. This was just stabilization. Then after I got the wheels and tires off, I took an aircraft jack and put it in here. Took a piece of 2x4, bored a one inch hole in it where it would wedge into the end of the aircraft jack and couldn't slide front or back or from side to side. And I was able to take just enough of the load off of the landing gear that I could get the two pins removed. Then I could lower very carefully the landing gear bow, go inside, which is the only way to reach that, those screws, and replace all 16 screws. I came back down put the and jack the aircraft jack up very slowly until it aligned with the holes. I do have some alignment pins that assist in that. I was then able to get the securing shafts back in place. From start to finish, actual working time was probably eight hours. Of course the process was reversed. Take the sawhorse out from here put the gear back on the ground, remove these two pieces here which weren't put in till everything else was in place, run the gear down, take the sawhorse out, run the gear back up, and here we are with all 16 screws replaced.